But I think also, too, you know, there's a little fear sometimes, a little distrust when, oh, everything's going onto the Internet or, you know, I'm going to be paying my bills and the bank's connected. You know, I think uh, sometimes that fear would hold people back. But it's something they've all had to get over pretty quickly this last six weeks, that's for sure. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a great one. Our guest is a finance and accounting consultant and founder of MyCloudBookkeeping.com, Carrie Smithies. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. And just before we actually got into this conversation, we were talking a little bit about where you and I met and the fact that you are completely cloud-based and can work anywhere in the world. And I'm really looking forward to having this conversation and sharing about that. So, Carrie, before we get into some of that, please tell us a little bit about your career journey leading up until this point. Uh, I used to be Australian. I uh, was born in Australia and while living there, went school and became a chartered accountant. Um, worked in public practice mostly. And then in 1991, I uh, was married to somebody with Canadian citizenship and was fortunate enough to get to move here to uh, Vancouver, Canada. So I um, worked in a variety of different organizations, but kept being drawn to sort of the small to medium businesses, often with a bit of a tech bent, which still surprises me. I'm, I'm ridiculously tech savvy, but still in denial about it. So I'd be working with a lot of different businesses, uh, helping with different computer systems or com- uh, a lot of tech startups, some nonprofits, those types of organizations. I then took off to the Caribbean for about three years and worked for a large organization there and realized I didn't like it at all. Came back to Vancouver and the whole cloud world had had just really evolved in the time I was gone. So I was away volunteering in Peru and they were using QuickBooks online. And I've always been a QuickBooks desktop user amongst other things. And I got to see the power of that cloud tech and just what you could do with the different applications. So when I came back, I decided to set up a business that was purely supporting small business owners in getting themselves set up and automated as much as possible so they had visibility into their own businesses in real time. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Wow. It's, it's, it's so interesting. I mean, I mean, right now you're not traveling too much, as you mentioned, but you, you run and operate your business from any location and you've really embraced the cloud. What has that been like from the client side? Have they been embracing the cloud with you or have you been leading it for them or have they been asking for it? Oh, that's interesting. Initially, I found there was sort of people would be looking for someone in a geographic location and think that they actually needed to see you and weren't fully aware of some of the tools that were available. And where possible, I do like to meet people in person. Obviously, we're not getting to do that right now. But as they would work with me on a remote basis using the different tools. And I'd introduce them to say some expense capture like HubDoc or use some of the uh, functionalities like WayPay here in Canada, where you can just pay bills without having to pass around a checkbook. Perfect at the moment. So we'd automate some of these features and they would then come along. The people who who would have already embraced it would tend to be more of the entrepreneurial people. So you know, consultants, the people were a little bit already more nimble, but some of those smaller businesses we're a little slower to adapt and a little slower to kind of get the hang of the whole logging in online, setting the appointments online, something that we're probably a lot more accustomed to from you know, meeting with app partners and things like that. But once they come to see how it all works, often there's sort of a joyfulness about having some new toys to play with in a way. Mm, that's exciting. And and what about the the clients that have trouble embracing it? How do you get around that obstacle? It's more a case of what needs do they have to meet. 
and how can we do that most effectively? And I think if we can find tools to help them to solve different problems that they have or prevent problems happening or give them benefits in you know, some regular reporting or something, I think the, the objections kind of just fall away and become irrelevant once things are up and working. Hmm. Well, you know, you, you, you've said it too, your clients that do embrace it and when they, they get that, that lift from the technology, it's like the, almost a celebration of like, wow, you know, how did we do this before this technology? So that's, that's refreshing. And I guess it's just a matter of showing people the light a little bit. And uh, it's hard for people, you know, it's hard to imagine where people be like, oh, no, I don't want things to be more efficient or smooth or seamless, right? I don't want to be able to work from anywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I think almost laughable now. Some- it, it, well, gosh, this last few weeks for sure. But I think also too, you know, there's a little fear sometimes, a little distrust when, oh, everything's going onto the internet or, you know, I'm going to be paying my bills and the bank's connected. You know, I think uh, sometimes that fear would hold people back, but it's something they've all had to get over pretty quickly this last six weeks, that's for sure. Yes, that really has changed things and and will bring uh, all sorts of leaps in the technology. Uh, I mean, there's many, I mean, one example is Zoom. It's incredible to see that platform, which many people used prior, but now Mm -hmm. in the last four or five weeks, the, the amount of updates and changes to that technology and improvements to the technology. I mean, it's like having a two year improvement cycle happen within four weeks. I mean, they're and that's just one example. I mean, there's... It's funny. You think it's improved? I am just so frustrated. I've been using Zoom for two years. Yesterday, it took somebody 10 minutes to get in, to which would normally take, I don't know, 30 seconds because of all the enhanced security features. So I uh, perhaps the platform's improved, but I'm finding it a little frustrating with the masses kind of coming into something that was just so seamless before. It, interesting. I mean, there there definitely was that glitch Um when when it all changed, and I guess I'm up to date on on the uh, the the upgrades, but I've just found that the user interface got a little bit better, a little easier to to manage. But that's the other side of this is that it's a fast it's fast change. So there there's going to be things there that maybe we haven't even seen yet that are are not desirable and have become cumbersome because there is a lot of increased conversation for that particular platform around security, uh, certainly. But change uh, is certainly has its pros and cons. And you It's constant though, isn't it? it? I know that's such a cliche, but it's so true. It is. And I mean, that part in part has been your business for a very long time, being a pioneer almost in the cloud bookkeeping space. And so you've been observing the changes probably in the, the accounting platform that you use, QBO. Maybe speak a little bit about what that's been like in that, you know, wh- what QBO was three years ago, 24 months ago, right? Even 12, 12 months ago. It changes rapidly. What's been your experience of that? I think it's mostly more robust. They're building out uh, improving features, like kind of in the sales tax and more of the the ancillary benefits. Uh, definitely, the app environment that you can build into is you know changing all the time. Some of the the companies like, for example, we used to love doing the backups with Chronobooks and that's not available anymore since QuickBooks has bought them. So some of those changes are a little frustrating, but I think the product itself, other than interface changes, I think that basic core product has really just become sort of stronger and more solid with most of the changes being you know, more subtle reporting and sales taxes and things. What do you think, Michael? You know, I I think the word from the people that use it every day, the people that come onto this show, is exactly that. It's been just a continual improvement of the platform, more stable, and they're working to figure out how to make it easier to do the work that you need to do. I mean, that's the promise of technology is uh, improvement and and more satisfaction from the user, more insights. So I'd say that's that that is is in line with what everyone's saying. But it's interesting though, it does these these acquisitions from any software partner, I mean, Zero buying HubDoc and then QuickBooks buying a whole bunch of different uh, technologies that people used, loved, worked great together. 
and then the apple cart gets upset and we're, you know, change happens. So I think there's been bumps along the way, but it's, I guess, a frustration that comes up in many, many of uh, the people in our community is, is that rate of change when things are bought or, you know, how do you keep up with all of the change? How do you know the frustration of, well, it used to work like this and it was great that way. Now it's different. How do you manage the change from in your own business? I mean, your business is a nimble business and, and yet there's still a lot to keep up with. How do you, how do you manage that? I try to be pretty focused. I really, if I found something and it works, I don't go looking for another alternative. When I hear about new fancy things, I kind of table them. I'll keep a little note maybe in a corner of my brain, but I try not to go into app overload, find something that works, stick with it. And yeah, unless there's a problem, don't change it. And also don't go down rabbit holes. I'm really good at not going down rabbit holes. If something's not working, I'll stop. I'll reach out. Um, the, some of the forums are absolutely fantastic. The QuickBooks community is just amazing with our support for each other. So I'll run to a forum or perhaps book something with the app partner to see what I'm not doing right. But avoiding rabbit holes, I think, is a really key thing to you know, managing all of the different options that we have because you just can't know everything. You really cannot. That's absolutely right. Great, great tip too, because the, those rabbit holes can take up an incredible amount of time and time can be saved by just reaching out for help. But somebody's already gone down that rabbit hole. And think, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And another thing too, before I look, uh, use a new, uh, some sort of a new program, there are ways to check into them. For example, I think is it Glassdoor where people write reviews about employers? It's a really interesting place to go and you do a little search on a company and you find out how they treat their people. And then you get a sense of if they're the sorts of organizations you'd want to work with. So just make sure too that the people you're working with, you have the same sort of values. Uh, One of the things I like about the conference in Toronto where I met you is I get to meet the other app partners and I get to meet the guys and find out who I would like to work with, who are you know, customer service focused? Who's going to help me when we have a problem? Because when we're on the cutting edge of technology all the time, like we are, things go wrong. It's just going to happen. And it's what you do about it, I think, that matters. And for me, the applications where they'll swoop in and do what needs to be done to make sure your client's still working, you're still working, everything functions, they're the sorts of people I'd like to work with. Yeah, that's great. It's a great, uh, great way of thinking about it. And uh, certainly one of the key valuable points of going to conferences to be able to vet and validate some of the people that are behind these these different apps. I'd love to hear a few of your favorites. You you likely have a pretty big tech stack of tools that you're using, apps that you're using. What are some of your favorites? Uh, for me personally, I love Text Expander. I don't know if you've ever used that one, but you make these little tiny little snippets and you type them and it fills out a whole big pile of text. So whenever I get an email inquiry from somebody, I just go backslash boom, email, and it fills out the entire email that I want to send. And then I just personalize it. So I love Text Expander. Uh, Calendly is integral to my business. And one of the things I like about Calendly is not just that avoiding that huge waste of time trying to set appointments, but it really helps with boundaries because if somebody's like, oh, but can't you just meet after hours or or what about on Saturday? There's none of that conversation. So you just, they go straight to my calendar and boom, there it is. There are only times available, other times that are available. So that's really been integral. And I've linked that up to Stripe. So I can take a deposit up front from people. So that helps once again, it's good for boundaries, You've got money up front before you start working with somebody. So that's that's another kind of using Zapier to, stri- to, to link that in is pretty cool. Uh, with clients, uh, I work with WayPay I love here in Canada. I really don't like their interface, but they're such great guys. And uh, it's been um, an app that I've been putting more people on lately. It's a payment application where you can send money directly to people's bank accounts. It's been purchased by Royal Bank now. So the security, well, it was good before, but there are definitely no concerns now. And I'm finding people with multiple signatories are no longer able to pass around checkbooks. So that's a good one. 
Uh, yeah. Rotessa are fantastic, really basic system. Their QBO integration is very basic. There's no no fancy bells and whistles, but they're collecting money for me. So I like that they're secure, simple, just doing the job well. Uh, it's definitely another favorite. I'm still using HubDoc. I like HubDoc. Uh, put clients on HubDoc. That's another one that I do like. Oh, line two. I have a Wi-Fi line on my cell phone. So I can use that wherever I am in the world. It's a triple eight number. But the other thing I can do is I can turn it off when I want to. So I have an office phone on my cell phone that I get to turn off and I don't have to share my cell phone number. So that's another one I like. Oh, I'm trying to think. there's so many. Last pass. Oh, my goodness. Password manager. Oh, saved my life. That one saves me. Um, forget password. Can't remember, you know, sending those emails, confirming things. I don't have to do any of that anymore. So I really, really like LastPass as well. So there are a few. <laughs> That's a great, great one. The uh, the one, the office, what was the office uh, phone called, that one? Line 2. Line 2. Yeah, it's great. I love it. So it's just on my cell phone, but I can keep my cell phone number private. Very cool. That's uh, yeah. That's excellent. So it's an app that's on your phone that you can then call through. Yes, exactly. And I can log into it on my computer as well. Excellent. I, I've used it when I've, I was in Australia visiting my, my mom and people did not know that I was not here. That's fantastic. Well, those are some great, some great examples. And I'm, I'm sure uh, all, all of those uh, app partners would be happy to know and hear how you're, you're doing with them. And as well, our, our listener right now, it's, it's great because it's like sitting down, having a coffee with you, being able to say, you yeah, know, these are some things maybe they need to put in the back of their mind or put to the side for later to, te- to check out if they, they have uh, a need. But I love how you've framed them around how they're making your life better and how you're using them. It's really helped me to grow my business without having to increase my overhead. It keeps me nimble. It keeps me mobile. And I have these fantastic time-saving things that just really build out that administrative side of my business without me having to you know, incur extra costs. I, I do outsource some things using Upwork and Fiverr, but mostly it's just me and all the apps doing all the work. That's remarkable. You know, in doing that, you are a big fan of outsourcing from what I've read. You know, you use Upwork, you use uh, Fiverr. You know, when do you choose which platform? Maybe share a little bit about that because I don't know that many people have taken advantage of using those platforms. Okay. Uh, If there's something I don't like doing or I'm not good at doing or it's inefficient for me to do, that's when I'll, I'll look out to these people. So for example, if I need, want to create a PDF, I, I just, I don't have the software subscription. Yes, I could learn how to do it. If I want to format a Word document, I would spend too long doing that. That would be like a rabbit hole for me. So those types of things, I'll throw them out to Fiverr. Transcriptions for my videos, for my YouTube channel, I use the same person. She's in the Philippines. She has a team of students working with her. So I'll just automatically send that to her. I I start to get favorites. Uh, Sometimes too, if I'm doing something like a logo, and I'm not necessarily saying that's the best place to go for a logo, but you could send it out to maybe two or three different people and just see what you get back. So five is really great for that. Upwork, I would tend to use more if you're wanting to build a relationship with somebody to work with over a longer period of time and maybe have more concerns with security. You might uh, like the people I use on Fiverr, with the exception of somebody who made a MailChimp template for me, none of them have any login information or anything else. But if you were looking to do that, then Upwork is possibly a better place to go. It's more of an ongoing service. You can limit the number of hours somebody works for you in advance. And that's where I met my video editor. We actually work directly now, but he's in Serbia and he edits all my YouTube videos and I found him in Upwork. So it, I think it, it just depends on what you're looking for, but you can find everything for you in Fiverr. It's it's really amazing. I When I needed a new resume years ago, I, I sent out my, my old CV out to about three different people, got all the feedback and then collated it all and sort of created a best document from all of all of the different different submissions. Incredible. Uh, you know, if, if there was someone who'd never used one of these tools before, what would your recommendation would be to, to getting started? Um, log into Fiverr, search what you're looking for. You know, just type in, what is it, you know, do you want a PDF created or you know, a logo made or business cards designed? Just type in it and just have a look through, see, read their reviews. 
you know, look at the different pricing. Look, you can you can do a little scroll through the gallery of what they've done and send them a message and just communicate and see. It's, it really is a, a whole new world, and, and I think that's a great advice. Just go try it uh, because this can be another one of those rabbit hole removers where you know those places that you go to do something or try something and it just takes too much time. Well, you could get a relationship with somebody that knows how to do it, get it done right, get it done fast, and save a heck of a lot of time. Oh, I love it with my video transcriptions. By the time I finally get them recorded and filmed and oh, sent to my editor, it just seems to take me too much time. But I get it back from the editor, watch it through, and I just send it off in Fiverr, and I wake up the next day. They're in the Philippines, so the transcription's done. So it, you know, they're working while I'm sleeping, which is fantastic. Wow. You know, it, it'd be interesting, you know, there's so many things that you're doing that are, you're leveraging technology, you're leveraging, leveraging some of the, the new ways of doing business and interacting with people. What do you find challenging about the business? I, my, what I, the service that I provide is a little different in that I don't necessarily have constant ongoing clients. So I'm always looking for new people who are either troubleshooting, need some training or need some setup. And I I think it's just that trusting that there's always going to be more business. There's always going to be more people needing help. And uh, just remind, especially at the moment, you know, reminding myself that it's okay. Business drops off a little bit, but it's picking back up. And you, know, as strange as it might sound, all of those tech things you can learn and you know, working with people is fantastic. I love working with people. It's so exciting. But it's just reminding myself that everything is always going to be okay. As strange as it might sound is probably my biggest challenge. It is one of the, the things about being an, a, an entrepreneur, being in business for yourself, is there is there is no safety net. And so mm-hmm. I'm sure the people who do like Cirque du Soleil, where they don't have a safety net, they have to at some point go, geez, what if, <laughs> right? And so yeah. part of that, I think our, our mentality as business owners is to to find ways and patterns of, of being able to deal with that. And so how have you managed that? And, and what are some of the things that you do to reinforce that everything's going to be fine? You did it yesterday. You'll be able to do it today. Uh, what, do, what, what, what things do you do? I really, really, really watch my thoughts. And I really try to catch myself the minute I'm going to a place that's not helpful. Daily yoga, I'm not great at doing it every day. This week I have, last week I didn't. But if I just take that less than half an hour even, just to ground and center at the beginning of the day, I journal every morning. I set intentions for my day, not just business intentions, but just how am I going to be today? What what is what's happening today, what I would like to achieve as well. But I do that and thankful, a a constant gratitude practice. Every night I write five things I'm thankful for before I go to sleep. And so it really, it's about the positive mindset, but not that, oh, everything's just all rosy positive mindset, but really genuinely watching your thoughts, catching yourself with negative thoughts, reminding yourself of your past successes. If you've got this far and Things have, you know, we've all had our ups and downs, but you've able been able to overcome so many things to get as far as we've got. There's no reason why everything would suddenly go horribly now. It's just, I guess, resilience. Resilience and just being focused on what's really going on and not 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 feeding that negativity. Mm-hmm. I'm really careful about what I watch as well. I you know, I don't watch the news. I keep away from you know, a lot of the, the gossipy chatter about what may or may happen with viruses and other people's presidents. And I just keep away from all of that. Mm-hmm. It's great, great advice and, and some solid, so, solid practice to bring yourself into a, into a strong mentality. I think important, especially in times like this, and uh, we can all watch our information diet, that is for sure. Uh, you know, it, it can catch up. I, I did a news diet for like 18 months at one point where I just did not read or watch any news. It got to the point where I just had no idea what was going on in the world. I've dialed back and obviously things are, are, are certainly, uh, you know, need to keep in up to date with different things, but there's so much information that's unnecessary for our minds and not helpful for what we're up to and what we're doing. So it's being selective, just like if we were, you know, watching our weights or trying to eat healthy and have good energy, we would watch what we put in our mouths. So Mm. I like that thought. Now you've, you've done a lot on YouTube. You've mentioned it a few times. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel. 
Uh, what I do is I have um, how-to videos, mostly for QuickBooks. So business owners get themselves, you know, along a certain way or get caught with something they don't know how to do it. They can go and search up your how to match transactions from the bank feed, how to do a bank reconciliation, how to track your time and charge it to invoices. Just a multitude of different videos. Um, I'm not too sure how many I've got up there now, like 30 to 50 or something, I think. So they can just, it's available to anybody to go and just troubleshoot and search out whatever they need to know. And what, what had you get started with that? Oh my goodness. I can't even remember. I, I have these ideas. I do these things and then I move on so quickly. Um, how did I get started? <laughs> I think I just decided that was going to be my marketing, though, the way that I was going to drive business to my business. I don't do any advertising. So um, YouTube, it's kind of like a calling card. It it helps to set me as an expert in the field for sure. And people do come to me directly from YouTube. And it's so wonderful. I had a lady from North Carolina. She said, I've been watching you for two years and you've helped me so much. And I told my husband, I need to go to that YouTube lady. And it was just so beautiful. And then this morning, I have an email from one of her friends. She's referred to me, which is really lovely. And it's so great to get to work directly with these business owners as well, because they're they're, they're trying so hard. They're working all day. They're doing what they do. And often, I think they're embarrassed about not knowing the financial side of the business. But you know, the lady today is a dentist. You wouldn't want me to be doing that. Or you don't want me doing the electricity in your house. Like I don't know anything about what they're doing. And I don't like that they they feel kind of some shame or embarrassment about not knowing the business. So it's it's really fun to work with them to give them the tools to make things more efficient and save some time because you know, when they're working in the business and then coming home at the end of the day and having to do this, it's exhausting. But also with some financial literacy. So usually what we'll do is I'll you know, show them their reports, talk them through their reports, help them to understand what's going on, which is really rewarding. I really, really like doing that with them. Mm. It's remarkable. You know, I always love hearing those stories of the helping of small business owners and a lot of shame and embarrassment that that people have around their financials. And it's so important. It's so important for the health of a business and so freeing when you can bring them to another level. And these are the people that make up our society, that make up our communities, you know, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. And and without them, without health there, we would be in a very poor shape uh, in our communities. Yeah, I put out a a video about managing cash flow at the beginning of all of this, and I had to redo it because I'm saying things like, you're the soul of our community and we can't have you go. And you're like, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a little over the top here. (laughs) But it really is how I feel. You know, where I live in Vancouver, we've seen a lot of gentrification, a lot of change, but it's the small businesses who are important to me. That's what it is that makes my community special, my neighborhood special. And, you know, everywhere, has those those pockets of of what is individual and different about your neighborhood. Once it's all changed and once they're all gone, it's too late. And uh, I think that's my biggest concern here coming through the virus. I think on a lot of levels, particularly here in Canada, we're managing things very well and there is a support network there. But I, I am concerned for those businesses who won't make it through. I really am. Hmm. We all are. And it, it is those businesses that have had the fortune to meet someone like yourself, likely along the way, where they've been able to understand the finances, know where things are at. Uh, in some cases, there's nothing that can be done in in a, in a crisis like this, where, you know, the, the you know, huge shifts in the way people are doing business uh, and things being, I mean, the travel industry has uh, just been completely uh, wiped in many ways. What You know, many businesses will be impacted forever because of that. Yes. But for, for the ones that do have the financial literacy, do have systems and process in place and have an understanding and are doing the things that they need to do to have information and be empowered around the decisions that they make financially will be a better place. And I, I, I like to highlight it on the show as much as I can, because I think for the listener, it really is an example and a message of the value that bookkeepers have and bring to business. And it's just, I I don't think it can be said enough. And I hope a listener gets that. And, you know, every time they hear it, it's like, oh, right. 
you know, because we can easily forget. We can get caught up in the just doing of the business and doing the work. We can forget the why, the importance, the value that's being delivered. So glad that we had the opportunity to bring it up again and and uh, give people a bit of wind in their sail oh, it's for what so they're important. doing. Mm-hmm. And also, too, not only is it important, you can't make good decisions without good information. But being able to quickly access some of the government funding and things that's available at the moment means having up-to-date, accurate financials as well. A good bookkeeper is just so worth their weight in gold. Somebody who can you know, bring clarity to the numbers, make sure everything is up-to-date and accurate. You, you can then operate from a good, solid base and foundation. But if you don't have that, it's all shaky. And you just, I often think too, not knowing is worse than bad news, at least if you know something is not great, you can make a plan to improve it. But if you actually don't know, I think that's where a lot of fear comes from. Absolutely. And, and avoidance of it, you know, it prolongs, mm-hmm. prolongs the problem. And once the, once the courage that, that people uh, muster up to, to take action and face, face things, it's like whatever the answer is, it, it, it's empowering. And then something can be done about it uh, yes. and, and improve. So, you know, that's, that's it. And the work you're doing, teaching and educating, is the pathway forward, right? That, that woman who watched you for two years, you know, that helped probably build up the the knowledge and need to actually reach out and, and speak with you. So it's making a difference. And, and really, you have no idea how many people you've impacted and how you've impacted them. But that's part of the gift is you get to put that out there and be valuable and help people not even knowing that you're helping them. It's kind of exciting, actually. It's it's. I figure it gives me a little bit of a leeway to not be quite so wonderful all the time because maybe I'm getting some good karma there to counteract some of the evil thoughts I have sometimes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. We're all human. We're all human. And I do get to work with bookkeepers quite often, uh, particularly if they're not familiar with QuickBooks Online. Maybe they've been using another platform, so they'll they'll log onto my my channel and they'll find out how to do some different things or maybe something a little more esoteric they're not sure on. And then last night I was working with a, a bookkeeper out of Toronto when he gets challenges that are a little bit you know, something he's he's not too sure on. He'll book a session with me and we'll work together, we'll work through things and it, it's really fun and I, I must admit it's a little easier sometimes to work with bookkeepers because I don't have to be quite so careful about your know, jargon and and we can get into some of the more challenging things because they've got that higher level of understanding. So that can be really fun too. Well, that that brings up a great point. Let's maybe mention some of the resources that you have for our listener. I mean, your YouTube channel, uh, just it's, it's My Cloud Bookkeeping. If people go to yep. YouTube and type that in, of course, we'll have the links to this in the show notes, your webpage and where they can find you on LinkedIn. Uh, mm-hmm. But yes, a, a great resource to our community, to our listener. If people are having challenges, want to take a leap with any technology, you'd be a great person to reach out to. Yeah, I, it's really, and also the the forums as well. I'm not too sure how many of your listeners who are bookkeepers are in those forums, but they are such a fantastic resource. You, know, if I've um, I've got a client next week who actually they're a, a distillery and they've switched to making hand sanitizer, which is totally cool, and they're setting up a new implementation with a, a different application. So I just went right to the forum and reached out to the other bookkeepers and accountants in them and said, hey, who's got experience with this? What are your tips? And it's it's a really wonderful way that we work to work together, work with each other. And it it's a beautiful, it's not competitive. It's so beautiful to see the co- cooperation amongst all the other you know, bookkeepers and accountants who are all in this together. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. Great community. And uh, and it's a global community as well. So the answers and questions come from all over the world. Uh, so if you're not involved in those, get involved with them. Uh, there's so many great ones out there. Uh, specialty ones, local, uh, like geographic ones. Uh, so it, we're in a great place for the, for the community and for, for the industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we're really blessed, aren't we? We are. We are. Well, Carrie, this has been absolutely fabulous. Uh, On behalf of all of our listeners, I want to thank you for your generosity today and being on the podcast. My pleasure. It was really great to be here, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, our pleasure. And with that, we wrap 
another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. To learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. And until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.